take your Bibles and turn to Philippians chapter number 4. Now, uh, but I, what I want to start off with, and I want to ask you a couple questions tonight, and make a statement that, um, that I think we've all heard, and, and get to the thought that God's laid in my heart. Uh, I, I believe I have this, this quote correct, or this saying correct, an idle mind is the devil's playground. Correct? So, so we hear that thought, and, and too many times I'm afraid that what happens is we get to where we sit around and we allow our mind to just become consumed with certain things. And the first thing I want to ask you tonight is, what was you thinking about when you came in the door? Now, I'm not going to ask anybody to raise your hand and tell me what you was thinking. Um, I, I've thought about this, and, and the nice thing about my job that I have is you spend a lot of time alone or at least just working by yourself. And so I will preach my messages usually about 37,000 times a day to myself. And, and I will go through those things. And, and I have thought long and hard about this. And I wanted to uh, write a couple things down. And, I, and finally, I think it was yesterday, I'm like, no, I'm just giving. If God puts it on my heart to say it, I'm going to say it tonight. So, uh, you know, it, when you come in here tonight, what was your thoughts? What was you thinking about? Boy, it's Brother Josh preaching tonight. I'm sure I'm hoping he's short because, you know, I know there's some new shows, I guess, that have started. My new show's on at, you know, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock tonight. I can go have an ice cream, Brother Donald, and still make it home in time for my show to start. Maybe you had that thought. I don't know. I probably did, too. Maybe you thought, well, you know, Brother Doug's not here, so we're just going to go in and go through the motions and whatever it may be. Maybe you had a hard day at work. Then you, you walked in here tonight thinking, boy, I sure am so glad that I get to go to church tonight because I'm just tired of everything that the world has offered me. Maybe you walked in tonight, and if you're like me, you're very forgetful. And so you walked in tonight thinking about exactly what it was you was going to tell Brother James. i got to tell Brother James this. And you thought all day, you got to make sure you remember. Make sure I remember so you don't forget. You know, I was talking to somebody at work today, and, and we were talking about it, the new iPhone update. And he had done it, and I did it last night. And, and he said that he always uses his home screen and puts reminders on it. I was like, that's what I need to start doing. Anytime I think of something through the day, I just need to put reminders. I don't know how many times I would call Miss Caitlin during the day, and I was like, there's three things I thought of today I was going to tell you, and I remember one. And she goes, why don't you just write them down? She goes, just talk to your phone, write them down so you don't forget. And I should do that, and I forget to do that part too, brother. You know, brother. You know, so it is what it is. But what were you thinking about on your way in tonight? Now that when you got here, what was you thinking about? When you got here, did anything change your way of thinking? Did you get here and get to talk? And maybe, maybe you came in with every intent to worship tonight, and you came in and got talking to Brother Peter, and he told you about how bad his day was. I hope you didn't have a bad day or anything. And he began to tell you about how bad a day you had, and what happens sometimes. We listen to him, and it depresses us. Or we listen to her, and it depresses us. Because sometimes we allow the influence of others to affect our thoughts. You know, I heard this joke one time. I don't remember if it was Jeff Foxworthy or, or Bill Ingvall, one of them that said it, Brother Brian, and they was talking about it. They said, if you really got somebody at work you don't like, walk up to them on Friday and say, hey, are you getting fired? That's the rumor. Talking about ruining somebody's weekend. And they spend all weekend thinking they're going to come in Monday. It's terrible, isn't it? But if that was you, what would happen? you think about it. Because see, how many, times you get, how many times do you get that text message from somebody? You get a message from somebody, and, and it might say, I might text you, Miss Marcy, and say, hey, if, if you have the time, give me a call. And we'll think, well, what's he mean by if I have the time? Does he think I'm not busy? Does he think I don't like him, that I don't have that kind of time? And look, I'll be honest. I'll be, I'm not trying to, I'm not, I hope she's not, I hope, I hope Walmart's super busy right now. Miss Caitlin had somebody she used to work with, I think, that ordered a couple tumblers from Tina. And she needed them last week when she needed them. So she had them done last week. Now you've waited a week for the lady to pay and come pick them up. And she sent a text message to Caitlin, I believe it was, on Monday. Said, hey, I'm going to pay your mom today and I'll stop by and pick them up, exclamation point. But what she mean by that? Is that not how we think? Is that not how we get? We get a text message from somebody or a call from somebody, and we read into it. If I was to tell you, if I was just to make this statement, well, that's good stuff right there. Whose voice do you hear that in? You heard that in Brother Phil's voice, right? 
If you was to give, somebody was to send you, how many times do you get a text message from somebody and you read it in their voice as sarcasm or as something rude or something mean? And it's not meant to be that way at all. Why? Because the devil will play tricks on our mind. He'll get in our thoughts. You know, we, we have certain thoughts and we'll think about that thing and, and it can ruin our day. You text somebody, how many of you ever text somebody and you just ask them a simple question? Whatever it may be, you might ask them something. Hey, you know, we're, we're going to go out on Sunday after church and we would like for you to come go out to eat with us. And then you wait. And you wait. And you wait. Brother Donald, I text Miss Lisa and we, I invite her to go out to eat with all of us. And she, do you think she don't like our kids? Do you think she don't like us? Is that not what happens? Is that not what we'll do? We begin to read into it. How come they haven't answered me? Well, you don't know. They might be dead. You know, let's not get too dramatic, but let's just be honest. We begin to read into everything, and we begin to think about everything. I started to use the example about, you know, us inviting people on vacation with us, and they don't want to go with us because they don't like us. But I won't mention that one, Miss Lisa. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> that was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> I believe it. But how many times does things like that affect our thoughts? And it can get our mind away from the things of God. Can I say that, that our, our thoughts, what we think, affects our actions? In 1 Kings chapter number 19 and verse number 4, we all know, or if, if you're any kind of student of the Bible, you know Elijah has defeated all these prophets of Baal and he's all these prophets of the groves and all this stuff. And all it takes is a simple word from Jezebel. That tells him in verse number 1, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And then in verse number 2, Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as thy life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. In verse number 3, When he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. So we already see that, that just that simple word, his thoughts, created an action. He left. He took off. He ran from whatever it was. And then that action also led to verse number 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. It took an action. How often do, does somebody say something and it, it, it triggers a response in us? Our thought, we, we thought they meant something by whatever it is they said, and it, it ends up triggering some type of response from us, Brother Phil. And it might be good, it might be bad, but it will trigger a response. We see that our thoughts affect our actions. Not only does our thoughts affect our actions, our thoughts affect our altitude. How high we are going to get or how low. Can, I can't imagine being any lower than sitting under a juniper tree requesting for yourself that you might die. Why is it that you see and why is it that you see so many young people and just people in general nowadays committing suicide? It's all in their head. You get things in your head and you think that you're of no use. You think that nobody loves you. You think that nobody cares for you. You think that, that whatever it may be and you have it in your mind that you're going to be better off dead. You even have it in your mind that everybody around you thinks it'd be better if you was dead. As I already said, the idle mind is the devil's playground. The devil put all kinds of thoughts in your mind. And you can be, we've had this conversation at work many times about different people and about having thoughts and those kinds of thoughts. And it's amazing how you get to a low point. You get to that time in your life that you're down and what your mind, how it can mess with your head, how it can mess with your outlook on things. How many times have we ever... And this might just, you know, you've ever sat at home on a, on a Saturday night or maybe even on a Wednesday, you've been busy and think, boy, I just, I don't want to go to church. I'm just, I'm not in the mood to go to church. I, man, if I go to church tonight, I'm just going to bring the service down. And, and you're just so low and you don't want to go. But yet if you go sometimes and coming in, what it can do for you. How many times I have come with a headache or you've come not feeling good and by the time you get halfway through the service you've forgotten all about that. Sure. Our thoughts not only affect our actions but they affect our altitude. They decide a whole lot about how high or how low we're going to get. You think about have you ever got up and this is what always amazes me for me personally about our thoughts. You get up in the morning 
And sometimes that first thought you have getting out of bed might affect your whole day. You get out of bed and you wake up and you think, praise God, today's Friday. And boy, it's a great day all day because it's Friday and you know the weekend's coming up. Or whatever, hey, praise God, today's Wednesday, I get to go to church. And you wake up and you're excited all day long. But you wake up, today's Monday. Start of another week. This is terrible. And we have a bad day all day long. When it's beautiful, it's 65 degrees and sunny outside, you couldn't ask for a better day, but yet we've got it in our mind. It's Monday. What's this going to do? See, our, our, our minds, so our thoughts so much affect our altitude and our actions. There's so many times that we, we'll roll out of bed in the morning, and as soon as we roll out, we've already determined the type of day we're going to have because of the things that are in our mind. Not only does it affect our actions and our altitude, but it also can affect our appearance. Three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I don't remember when it was, we went to one of the Ryle football games. If you don't know and you've not seen that, that Tina has thought, I've been doing some cutting boards and Tina makes earrings, we bought this laser. And I won't get into the whole story about how that all came about. I'm not sure how, how that all came about, Brother Jim. We just, she said something about it and I was like, just do it, just, just do it. And so she makes earrings. So three or four weeks ago, we was at one of the Ryle football games, and we're sitting there, and, and, and Bella's having a... If, if you want to see somebody have a great time, go with Bella to a football game. Bella absolutely loves football and hockey. How such a nice girl can like those two sports is beyond me, but that's what she does. So anyway, so we're sitting there, and we're just... We're having a grand old time. Ryle was winning, I think, at the time, and we're just having a good time. And, and Tina calls, and she's like, What's wrong with the laser? I don't, I don't I, I'm, I'm sitting in the stands at the football game. You're at home. I have no idea what's wrong with laser. She said, I've just tried to cut through. I've wasted a whole section of my board trying to cut through these earrings, and it's not cutting through. I said, I, I have no idea. So I, I don't know. All right, well, I'm going to let you go. I can't hear you. And she hangs up. So I sat there, and we're sitting there at football. I mean, I'm not leaving. Ain't nothing I can do about it, Brother Brian. She's got figured out. I don't know. And we sat there. And Brother Ray, I bet you over the next 10 minutes, I bet Bella asked me 15 times, what's wrong? What's wrong, Dad? What's wrong? What's wrong? And I said, nothing, Bella. We're watching the game. It's all right. What's wrong? Because she could see on my face. I'm sitting there worried thinking, oh, wow, we've signed up to do three craft shows over the next month and a half. And if this laser breaks, what are we going to do? Like, I hope they give refunds on our money back because we don't, we don't have enough stuff for that many craft shows. And going through my mind, oh, my goodness, has it already broke? We've only had it this amount of time. And all these thoughts going through my head. What can I try when I get home? What if I do this? And she can see that worry on my face and knows and asks me time after time, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? See, our, our thoughts affect our appearance. You can walk out of here, and especially if you're on the job, and if you will go to, to work tomorrow, and you're on the job, and people know that you came to church, what does it say about coming to church? You walk in tomorrow like this. As the old Eeyore, don't mind me. What's it going to say about us? But didn't you go to church last night? Didn't you have a good time? Didn't you get to enjoy the Lord? And we look like that. It affects our appearance. If we are happy, you will be able to tell. You can look at somebody and see when they are joyous, when they are happy, when they've done something that they have enjoyed or whatever it may be. And a lot of times that all is because of our thoughts. You ever looked at that person when they come in? Excuse me. You come in and you look at him, you're like, wow, he's in some pretty deep thought. You're like, hello, hello, are you there? Yeah, I was sitting in bed last night and doing something. And I told him, he's like, hello, are you looking at me? She's like, I thought you was talking to the dog or something. But see, we get our, our, our thoughts will affect our appearance. People can look at you and know if you're in deep thought, if you're happy, if you're sad, whatever it may be. So our thoughts, not only do they affect our actions, not only do they affect our alt altitude and our appearance, but they also affect our attitude. In Acts chapter number 26, I should have already turned over there. Acts chapter number 26. If you don't know, Paul's in jail, and he's been told he's going to get to go before King Agrippa. And in verse number 1 in Acts chapter 26, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy. That's what he said. And if I'm supposed to take the Bible literally, that's exactly what he said. I think myself happy. 
So your thoughts will affect your attitude. If you want to sit around and you want to be depressed and think that in your mind, you will be depressed. Now, I'm not trying to downplay any kind of clinical depression or anything like that, but our attitude is affected a whole lot by what we want to sit around and think about. Sure. Our attitude is affected a whole lot of what we want to sit around and think on. And that's what I want to preach on tonight is just the simple thought, determined thoughts. How determined are we to have certain thoughts? In 2 Corinthians, and I'm eventually going to get to where I told you to turn to, I promise. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, and I just told you determined thoughts. So how many of you have already thought and looked at your watch? 742, he said five minutes, so we're going to be done in no time. Tell me how many of you thought that? In 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, in verse number 1, Paul, writing to the church of Corinth, says, But I determined this with myself, that I would not come again to you in heaviness. It means he had determined. He's like, I have determined in myself I'm not coming to you the same way I had before. I'm determined I'm not going to let this happen. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do certain things. And I'm going to come to you in a different attitude. What if we came to church determined to worship? What if we came to church determined that we was going to have revival break out? You know, I, I talked about, we talked about Monday night. Uh, we were starting to run low on tracks, and I said on my Monday night, I was like, you know, we don't have a lot of weeks left anyway. Uh, you know, the time's going to change at the beginning of November. Uh, we have revival coming up, and praise God, hopefully revival coming up here on the 16th, and we don't have any more after that. We just keep going, brother Donald, and have revival every week after that. And see, we, we our problem, I'm afraid, and this just might be thought God put in my head, maybe it's me, that we automatically begin to think, I ain't got time to come to church every night for two or three weeks. I got this going on and that going on and this going on, and we've already thought ourselves out of having a revival. What if we determined when we walk through that door, I'm not going to let anybody change my attitude. I'm not going to let anybody change my altitude. I came here tonight to worship God and have a wonderful time in the Lord, and that when I walk out of here, I've been revived every single time I come through the doors. How can we have determined thoughts? I'm glad you asked. Philippians chapter number 4, verses 1 through 8. It says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Yodas and beseech Synthix, and, they, and that, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, and Clement also with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Can I say the Lord's at hand tonight? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. I love this next verse. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You want to have a different outlook on life? You want to have a different outlook as you get up in the morning? Think on these things. If it's pure, if it's good, if it's of any virtue, all these things, think on on these things. And you might say, well, how am I just going to automatically think on those things, Brother Josh? Well, the first thing we need to do is we just need to change our thinking. Change your way of thinking. Right. How many times, as I alluded to earlier, how many times have you ever walked into church and been down? You've been depressed. You've been aggravated. Now, you know, I talked a little bit about appearance and, and uh, talking about appearance and the things and the thoughts that you're having. Can I say, those that were here Monday night, I got a phone, we got a, a letter in the mail. These liberal people, Brother Jim, I'm about to wring their neck. They're driving me crazy. We got a letter in the mail on Monday because now we got to make sure we hide our trash cans. It's been in your bylaws and your homeowners association all the years. I know it has been in the bylaws. What does it matter? It's a trash can. What does it matter if I got it set on the front driveway or set it? What, is, what in the grand scheme of things, why does it matter? And I had, and I called Tina, and I, I knew Tina, and this is, can I, can I tell this story? And so I come in on Sunday night, 
or come in on Monday night, and I was talking to Tina, and Brother Michael Jackson said, he goes, you look like you need a hug. He could tell by my appearance. I was fired up. He could tell by my appearance my thoughts weren't where they needed to be towards visitation. And I made a comment about Tina being fired up. You know, she, I told her that when she got home. And she goes, who asked if I was fired up? It's like, I think it was Brother Ray. She goes, nobody there knows I get fired up besides Miss Lisa and Miss Pam. She goes, they've probably seen me pretty fired up. So there you go. But we were just aggravated and frustrated. And we come in here, and, and you, you, I start, got ready to go out on visitation. And you know what? You automatically just start thinking, nope, God just blessed this invitation. And you just change the way you're thinking. Just automatically change. We come into church, and we're mad. We're aggravated at the world, whatever it may be. And you're just frustrated. And you just come in and just start thinking on God. Just come in and just start thinking on him. Think on those good things. Think about, boy, wouldn't it be awesome if we come in? Look, I understand. I believe with all my heart our pastor has gone away for a week. He's going to come back, and he is going to be wanting and ready to preach this Sunday. Wouldn't it be awesome to just see God show up and him not even preach? To him come in for a week and be so ready to preach and the big preacher just show up and just blow through this place and just see something we've never seen before take place. And he can preach on Monday night or Tuesday night or all week for all that matters. Wouldn't it? But it all comes if we're willing to just change our way of thinking before we come through those doors and just think about nothing about what God can do. How are we going to change? How can we get to thinking on these things? Just change your way of thinking. Not only, and sometimes you think, well, Brother Josh, it's not easy. I can't just change that way of thinking. Well, it, you might think that it's hard to do it if you'd sit down and do this. What does it talk about there again in verse number six? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. What if you just started just talking about that thanksgiving? Lord, just, I just want to thank you for this. And thank you for this. And just start writing down your blessings. And boy, you start writing down them blessings, and all of a sudden, it'll surely change the way you're thinking. All of a sudden, I won't be so worried about where my trash cans are at. I won't be so worried about what's going on in the job. I won't be so worried about all the nonsense going on in this world, because I'll realize just how thankful and blessed that I truly am. So that can be that easy sometimes just to change our way of thinking. Now, you might think, well, Brother Josh, I tried to sit around. I tried to write down my blessings, and the world still... I got a piece of ice. <laughs> you might think the world's just getting to you so much and, and you just can't change. It's not that easy to just change. I've sat down and I've tried. Well, then call somebody. Sure. Call somebody. Why, you know, don't even, don't even bother to try to text them, Brother Phil, and see if they're busy. Just call them. Right. Just call them up. Say, hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm really kind of busy right now. I understand that you got time to talk. Because I'm really down. I know our church well enough to know the gym that I truly believe with all my heart if I called brother Peter up and he was at work and if he was able to answer and I said brother Peter I'm struggling right now I just need to talk to somebody he would talk to me I believe that with all my heart now somebody might be at work not, not be able to answer they might not be able to talk they might say hey give me a minute and I'll call you back call somebody Talk to them. Tell them, hey, this is what I'm... Look, I'm, real, I'm really down right now. You know, uh, uh, Miss Pam ain't texting me back. I've been trying to get her and Brother Ray to go out to eat, and she don't want to go, and I know Brother Ray wants to, and, and, and I'm just struggling right now. I'm having a hard time with that. Call them and talk to them. I don't know why I'm picking on you. It's just this side. See, y'all came... I thought I was only going to be preaching to this side, because at 7 o'clock, this is all there was. So y'all came in kind of late and got settled in late, so I'm just going to pick on you. But too many times... We fail to realize and we fail to take advantage of the saints of God and the friendships that we have here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. We have people that care for us, people that love us, and we fail to realize sometimes how true of a blessing they could be and we don't call them. Not only do, can you just change your way of thinking, not only sometimes you need to call someone, but lastly, I told you it wouldn't be too long, call upon God. Psalms chapter number 50 and verse number 15, And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. You're struggling with something real bad? Call upon God. Ask God, you know, you might sit down and try to think on these things, and it's doing you no good, then call on God. God, I need your help. I'm trying to think of the nicest way to say this, but I'm not trying to downplay or degrade. What's he there for? What, what is it? If you're not going to utilize our prayer time and the opportunity to call out on God, what's he there for? Amen. He didn't just save us just for us to go to heaven and never have to deal with us again. But too many times we go through life 
and we have certain thoughts and we struggle with thinking and we struggle with the thoughts that we have and struggle through a day and never give a second thought to just calling upon him. Just saying, God, I need your help today. God, I'm struggling. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. God, I just, God, I just need your help. I need you to get these thoughts out of my mind. I need you to get them out of my way and start thinking about something else. And it might be you call upon him and all of a sudden you might get a phone call from somebody else to help you. Determined thoughts. You know, it's amazing to me the things that we can see in the Bible that tells us, as I said, Elijah should have been as happy as could be. He should be just blessing God and just wonderful. And all it took was one little phrase from a wicked, wicked woman. Now, I'm not saying any ladies in here wicked. It could have taken one little thing from a wicked man. But in his situation, it took one phrase from a wicked woman to completely kill him. Just to completely put him under a juniper tree and completely take him. But yet the Bible tells us, Paul told us in his chapter, in his, uh, in, in his talk, writing to Cor the church of Corinth, but I determined this within myself. Are we determined? Hey, Paul said, what did he say? I think myself happy. So that means it can be done. Paul did it, and Paul did it in jail. Paul sitting in jail, doing everything at that point in time that God has told him to do, God's called him to do, doing everything by, by uh, all accounts is right at that time, and he's thrown in jail for it. And he says, I think myself happy. I have been going to jail now for I don't know how long. I've yet to see, I, I've seen some people come in there excited to come to church. I've seen a lot of people come in there and get saved. I've seen God come in and seen, by all accounts, change people's lives. I have met people out in public that have said, you remember me, I was in jail and God saved me and this is what he's done for me. I've not had anybody, Brother Brian, and maybe you have, but I've not had anybody come in and say, I think myself happy. I've not. Why don't we try that? Why don't we have determined thoughts that the next time that we start to get down, the next time we start to get low, the next time we start to get our focus off of God, we determine in ourselves, I'm not going to let this world drag me down. Because can I say, I have learned over, especially over the last week, this world will drag you down like that. I alluded to it on Monday night. I told you, I was excited to come and go out on visitation. I was excited to be able to preach tonight, even though I was nervous. I didn't know how this would go. And I was, I was just nervous as all get out. And, I, and all it took was one stupid paper to ruin my day. That's all it takes sometimes. But we have to have that determination over that, that you know what? My life is still way blessed over anything like that to allow something like that to ruin my day or ruin my week because too many times that's what happens is we sit down and we get to think and have that pity party for ourselves, and it don't end after a Monday it turns into Tuesday it turns into Wednesday and all of a sudden now I just I don't feel like getting out of bed and going to church tonight hey brother Doug I can't be I, I'm not feeling the best I'm not going to be able to come to church tonight and then it goes into Thursday and goes into Friday. And then all of a sudden we're not at church on Sunday. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes that's how people might get out of church. We just allow that state of, of just depression. Like I said, I'm not trying to downplay any kind of clinical depression or anything like that. But we allow that to mess with our mind and get us out. Amen. You don't think it works? What did Brother Mike tell us up here on Sunday? The lady that had been out of his church, what did he say, three, four months? All because he didn't shake her hand. It wasn't her mad just because she didn't shake his hand. He didn't shake her hand. It's because in her mind was working on him. He don't like you. Yep. He don't, he, he's not even, as a matter of fact, Brother Don, he's not even called to see why you haven't been there in a couple weeks. Should it be his job to call and see why you haven't been here in a couple weeks? Should it be his job to find out why can't God get you to the house of God? Should it be his job? But that's how our mind will play. That's how we'll get those things. We've heard it said before, and we have seen it happen. Well, so-and-so said this to me. Well, they didn't mean anything by it. But too many times, we, how, I told you, how many times have you gotten that text message from somebody, and you read that text message in their tone of voice and how you wanted to read it, how you chose to take it. Not how they might have meant nothing by it, but you chose to read it in their voice how they wanted to. The devil can get into our mind have determined thoughts that we're going to overcome all that and we're going to come in here and we're going to worship and we're wanting to see God do something great out there. Brother Clinton, you come and get a song just play on your guitar for you. I'll ask all of you to stand and invite you to come. Maybe you come in here tonight uh, with something on your mind, already looking to get out, not thinking about 
the things of God. We're just going to give you an opportunity to come pray and uh, ask God to help you. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we're thankful for the opportunity we have. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that uh, you showed us the way. Lord, if we would just get thinking about you and put a lot of this worldly stuff behind us, God, and Lord, the help you can be to us as you just speak to hearts now during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.